Hi guys, today we're going to learn about area using the formula length times width. Alright, so our objective is to find area using area equals length times width, which could also be seen as area equals base times height, just depending on how you look at the figure. And this is page 61. All right, well, what is area? Well, before we learned about perimeter, and perimeter meant the distance around. So if I had a yard, I could find the distance around my yard if I wanted to put in fencing. Area is the number of square units needed to cover a surface. So I might need area if I want to lay sod or new grass in my backyard. So we're looking at right here, we have this shape of a T. If I want the area, I want to know how many square units it takes to cover that T. So in this case, all I would need to do is count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in this figure, my area equals ten units squared. And it's squared because they're square units. Okay, so looking here, when I find the area of a square, what I can do is, because a square has all sides the same, the length and the width, or the base and the height, are the same number. So I can do length times width and just label this 13, but I can also use this formula, which is one side to the second power, because both sides are the same number, 13 times 13 would be the same thing as 13 to the second power. So area equals 13 to the second power or 13 times 13. So then I'm going to solve that. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. Put your placeholder. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 9, 6, 1. So area equals 169 feet Squared. Again, it's square units because it's how many square feet would it take to cover the shape. All right. Next one, we have a rectangle. And so again, we have length times width. We could also call this base times height. Okay. So when I look at this, I know that here I have one side. I have the other side. I know that these are the same and these are the same. But really, since it's length times width, I just need to multiply these. And I have decimals, so we need to be careful. So area equals, it doesn't really matter which one I call the length, so I'm just going to call 12.5 the length and 6.5 the width. 12.5 times 6.5, that's 25. 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, put your placeholder, that's 30. 12, 13, 14, 15, 6, 7, so 5, 2, that's 11, that's 8, and then don't forget your decimal. There's one, two digits after decimals, so 1, 2, area equals 81.25 inches squared. Okay, next shape, we have a parallelogram, and this also works for a rhombus. We're gonna do base times height. Now, we prefer to use base times height here because we don't want you to think length times width, oh, it must be the sides, because it's not true in this case. Height, this right here would not be the height because you don't measure height at a slant. If I wanna measure how tall I am, I don't put a tape measure from one side of my foot and then cross it across my body and then measure all the way to this side of my head. I go straight from the floor up to the top point of my head. So, same thing here. I don't want to measure this height at a slant. I want to measure it straight up and down. Okay, so the best way that you can find the base and the height is to find the right angle. So see right here, we have a right angle. So that's going to tell you what your base and height is. Basically, whatever two numbers are hitting that, in this case, this height and this base, then that's going to be what I multiply. And the reason that these are the base and the height, if I were to take this little piece here and I were to just cut it off and move it right here, you can see that when I cover that up and I've moved it right here, it makes a rectangle. So that's why it's basically still length times width, but in here we're calling it base times height. 
Okay, this is the height of the shape, this is the base. And even though this isn't labeled, I know what it is because opposite sides on a parallelogram are the same, or rhombus. So if this is 11, then this is also 11 centimeters. So if I wanted the perimeter, I would need to add 7, 11, 7, and 11. But if I'm finding area, I need to use base times height, which would be 6 times 11. So area equals 6 times 11. Area equals 66 centimeters squared. All right, now composite figure we're gonna solve, and we notice this is an odd shape, so I can't just immediately do length times width, because what exactly is the length and the width? Well, the first thing I wanna do, just like with perimeter, is I wanna label all the sides that aren't labeled, okay? So, this right here is three, and this is two, and if I look, this right here would be this part, so if this piece is two, and then this piece is three, that together would make five inches, and then on here, if this whole thing is 10, and just from here to here is six, well, what's this other piece right here? Well, 10 minus six is four, so this is four inches. So I have all the numbers. So now let's see. This is an odd shape, but I know how to find the area of a rectangle, so I'm gonna wanna chop this figure up so that I have rectangles. Well, you could either chop it right here or you could chop it right here, up to you. It's really personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and just chop it right here. So now I'm gonna find the area of this piece, and then I'll find the area of this piece, and then at the end I'll add that together. So I need to find the base and the height, or the length and the width of this piece, and I notice that this right here is four, and this is two. I don't wanna use 10 because that's this whole piece, not just of this rectangle. So four and two, so four, times two, that would be eight, so this piece is eight, okay? And then here, I have six and five. Again, I don't wanna use the 10 because that's this whole length and I just wanted of this piece. I also don't wanna use three because that's just here, not all the way. So I'd have six and five, six times five, that's 30, so this piece is 30. And then I add it together to find the total area, so 30 plus eight, equals 38, area equals 38 inches squared. Okay, and last one, we have a word problem. Maya's bedroom door has a perimeter of 21 feet and a height of seven feet. If she wants to paint her door blue, how many square feet will she need to paint? Well, the first thing I would always recommend is try drawing a picture, especially with problems that involve shapes and geometry, you wanna draw a picture. So. Here is her door, all right? And it tells us the height is seven feet. So I know this is seven feet. And it tells me the perimeter, which means all the way around is 21 feet. Well, I know that I need to find area because it asks me for square feet. Well, I know the formula for area is base times height. So I need to find what this base or this width is, and I have to use this perimeter given to find that. So if the whole way around is 21, well, I know at least that this side would also be seven. So first I'm gonna add these two sides. So seven plus seven would be 14. So that already is taken care of, so I'm gonna subtract these to see what's left over for this. So 21 minus 14, 11 minus four is seven. So I have seven feet left over. Now don't say that this width is seven. Remember, you still have two sides here. So I need to divide this by two. And that would go in three times, which is six. Add a decimal and a zero. That goes in five times. So 3.5 or three and a half feet is how wide the door is. All right. So now that I have the base and the height, I can actually find area, and I need to multiply. So 3.5 times 7, that's 35. 7 times 3 is 21, 22, 23, 24. And I put my decimal, there's one spot, so one spot. So how many square feet? She would need to paint 24 and a half or 24.5 feet squared.
All right, so just remember base times height, find the right angle to help. It even works on these because you can see on a rectangle or a square, the right angle is always in the corner, okay? So base times height, length times width, same thing. Be careful, make sure you are putting your units squared because it's area. All right guys, keep practicing and thanks for watching.